Hey Joe, have you heard that the rollers are coming back from heat treating today? I want to ensure we can complete the order on time. Can you calculate how long the order of 50 parts will take to complete using our CNC lathes? Sure, I'll use the diameter and the length of the part along with the manufacturer's tool information so we can calculate how long it will take to finish turn the 50 piece order. Okay, here's the part drawing showing the dimensions we need. The rollers are five inches long by two inches in diameter. We'll be using this turning tool which has a single cutting edge. Sounds good. I will have to consult the reference catalog provided by the tool manufacturer for the best range of speeds and feeds to use on this application. I see here in our catalog, the manufacturer recommended an SFM value of 800 feet per minute. We also need to look up the feed per tooth value, which will be five thousandths of an inch. You may be asking, what is a CNC lathe? Behind me is one of EMT International's CNC lathes. The cutting tool is mounted to the turret, which moves in two axes known as X and Z. The rotating action of the workpiece is then called turning. The objective of CNC machining is to produce precision parts in a repeatable method with as little human intervention as possible. They may seem very modern, but CNC machines like this one have been used for a wide variety of manufacturing purposes for nearly 70 years. In the computer controlled machine tools, how do you think the tool movement is controlled? In a machine shop, a common term you will likely hear is speeds and feeds. Spindle speed refers to revolutions per minute, or RPMs. This term describes the number of revolutions the spindle has completed in one minute. Feed rate describes the pace at which the cutting tool is advancing along the workpiece. Mathematical equations are critical in all areas of CNC machining. In our scenario, we'll need to find out how much time it will take to complete the 50-piece order. To do this, we will first need to determine the best spindle speed to use. Spindle speed will determine how fast the cutting edge of the tool will contact the workpiece. Given the following information, calculate the desired revolutions per minute, or RPM. The surface feet per minute, or SFM, we will use is 800 feet per minute. Our part's finish diameter is two inches. To find the revolutions per minute, use the constant of 3.82 multiplied by our SFM value divided by the part diameter. Our calculations show that the desired revolutions per minute will be 1528 RPM. Spindle speed is very important in machining because using too high a spindle speed can lead to overheating and premature tool failure. Similarly, using too low of a speed will push the tool into the cut faster, causing the removal rate of material to increase. This can also cause premature tool failure. Feed rate refers to the pace at which the tool is cutting the workpiece. Because we now know the desired RPM, we can calculate the cutting tool's feed rate in inches per minute. To solve for our feed rate, we will take the number of revolutions per minute made by the machine spindle multiplied by the number of cutting edges, multiplied by the manufacturer provided feed per tooth value. Using this equation, we calculated a desired feed rate of 7.64 inches per minute. Feed rate is very important because using too high of a feed rate will result in poor surface finish. On the other hand, using too slow of a feed rate will increase the wear to the cutting tool and increase the cycle time. When we determine the length of time this operation will take, we use our length of cut divided by the linear speed of the tool. Let's calculate the time in minutes it will take to machine the five inch long roller at the two inch diameter. We have now calculated that it should take 32 and a half minutes to complete this order of 50 parts. That's great news. We will be able to get this job out ahead of schedule. 
Speeds and feeds directly affect the accuracy, surface finish, and tool life. It is very important to calculate the proper speeds and feeds because different materials will run better at specific SFMs. To achieve the best results, the optimal combination must be calculated using the manufacturer provided data. Even though technology has simplified many areas of the manufacturing process, it is still critical to understand the fundamental math concepts used by these technologies to maximize efficiency and minimize costs.